All footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video as well as the music too. I want to lend a huge shout out to Sweatsicle for helping me fact check, come up with examples for this script, and also provide me some footage. I am taking you back to the wildest 24 hours in Destiny history, a period of time in which legends were cemented and curses were ultimately started. This is the raid Last Wish, and these 24 hours were incredible. Like previous videos I have made, I like to give you context as to why stakes are high, emotions higher, and challenge a true pinnacle. The Raid Last Wish was dropped on us Friday, September 14th at 1pm Eastern, 10am Pacific. This was released a whole 10 days from Forsaken's launch of September 4th that same month. Now, this is the longest we have had to wait for a Destiny Raid, ever, and for good reason. Forsaken launched with many players starting at power level 380 with the goal to reach 500 by the end of the campaign. This took players a day or two to beat and was overall a blast to experience, R.I.P. Cade. What we weren't expecting was an exotic questline that would unlock the Dreaming City, the large and beautiful hub world which was full of difficult activities and this included what was soon to be the Last Wish Raid. So, when players reached power level 500, they were met with something completely new. A brand new leveling system which included daily and weekly powerful drops. These drops would give you a random weapon or piece of gear with a plus one increase for that item for daily and plus three for weekly. This made the leveling process very slow, with players having to average out their loadout to see the power level steadily increasing. But players were having a blast with it since it was new and a grind that players of Destiny 2 Year 1 weren't accustomed to. Weapon 2.0 system was also very new to the game as players could choose two specials and one heavy. The trade-off being ammo and random rolls for weapons was back. Now I want to also add that there was something called Prime Engrams which would give you a pretty decent chunk of levels too. Just remember that it's random what you get, aka 5 helmet drops in a row was very very possible. The Dreaming City and other powerful activities were the only ways players could keep increasing their power and Bungie knew they had to give players more time to account for the new leveling system and the fact that Last Wish was power level 550 to start and 580 to end. Yes, you heard me, power level 550 was just the starting encounter. This was going to mean no matter how hard you grinded, you were going into the raid under leveled. The next piece of context I want to give is the weapon and class meta at the time. While well, yes, now most players just simply have found ways to bash this raid into the ground with grenade launchers, shotguns, and other weapons, back then everything was new including the Well of Radiance, a super most players are now used to, but then had little feeling towards. We also had the ability to auto reload with rally barricades and healing rifts. Shotgun's fire rate was dramatically better, and the Whisper of the Worm used to not be nerfed. Final piece of context is that nobody really had all the new exotics, so farming your super with something like Phoenix Protocol for clearing enemies wasn't really the best option yet. Okay, so now knowing the context, let's begin with the whole Last Wish race. The raid begins and lots of players are antsy to jump in with fully master gear and the best weapons at their max level allowed in hand. The doors open and players meet Kali. Uh, okay. Um, there are symbols. There are symbols. Symbols. All right. There's, that's, that's there are uh, infinities. There's, I see all snakes. snakes. Yep. But they're snakes. different. There's infinity. Yep. There's, like there's intertwining and then there's half. That's already in. Kali the corrupted. This is the first boss already. Yep. Players figured out the mechanics of this fight rather quickly. Jump on plates, cleanse them three times, do damage in the middle, then go into doors. Rinse and repeat. However, what was great about Callie is that when you defeated her, she gave players the final seed of light, an item needed to unlock your third super. Anybody got super? You can yeah, shotgun yeah. safely from the, the stairs. We did. We got Big yeah. seed of light. All right, good seed. Wow, they actually put it on the raid. Yep, let's get ready to roll. This way, follow me. This was huge at the time since players didn't know how to get it yet, and while now there is different ways of obtaining it, back then this was game changing since everyone wanted to grind with new supers. This was also cool because it meant that the raid had stakes that we hadn't seen in a raid to this point, and we were just beginning. What else could this mean for the raid? The first team through this encounter to my knowledge was Dado in math class, killing Kali and heading immediately through to the next encounter. I think that something that's important to note in the footage you're watching is that players seem to be running and not caring too much about what they just did. This is because it is a race and if you fall behind by being attached to the last encounter you may lose your focus on what's to come. 
You need to be your absolute best in these raids, especially because you're figuring out raid mechanics and you're super under leveled for the encounters. Something else I didn't mention earlier is that Bungie had announced they would be giving players the winner of this raid the first ever title belt, a true physical piece of golden clout with the raid color and logo on it which your name would be engraved into it. As well, players would be guaranteed the 1000 voices, a gun that is a literal fire beam that explodes and does a ton of damage. Finally, a special 24 hour completion emblem that looks super unique and was the first time they ever did this. Do you think that this raised the stakes higher? Okay, so on to the second encounter. After Kali, most teams immediately cross the bridge to the next encounter, Shirochi. Much like Kali, Shirochi involves symbols, but in a different way. Players would soon find out. Yeah, because there's, there's another station here. Yes, so there's, there's two. Go to, go to the back room, trust me, just go to the back room, three people. Are you. Modern, modern, go back. You guys go, modern, go back to, go back to them. All right, ready? Place in three, two, one, go. Wait, I'm trying to find a fucking charge. Up. Which one do you step? When you when you step on them, they lift up, but we yeah. don't know which one's the hit. That's the thing. Ah, uh, that's true. Yeah, uh, I'm looking know. around. Tempo resumes. This tempo resumes. Are the plates are the plates different in any way? For those unaware of how this encounter works, think about it like a gauntlet spiral that you are advancing upwards through. Players get enough health off the boss to stun the boss, then move forward. However, they are on a timer to solve the puzzles in each room. Think about these puzzles like bingo. Right, we have to do this in the Wait, it's re it's a revealing symbols. Look at that. It's like a puzzle piece. It's a Where puzzle piece. We're missing four You're pieces. Okay, okay, this okay, one. This okay. one. Double these four. Okay, these four. It. Postage stamp in the bottom left corner. Oh yeah, I see it. I see it. I see. Okay. Okay. Then reveal the puzzle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hurry up, Bro. Get the last one. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay, okay, just just wipe, just wipe. We know what to do. Oh, I see. It's it's I like guess. bingo. It's yeah. nine pieces. We gotta reveal yeah. the symbol. Players must access as pressure plates to advance the puzzles, but if you jump on one, you take damage. This caused some confusion for teams, but most of the teams have figured this mechanic out rather quickly and advanced through. If I had something to say about Shirochi, it's that it made teams have to do a chase mechanic, which was very new for Destiny raid bosses, since they typically just sit still most of the time, and this boss definitely differed in that way. You will actually see Sleeper Simulant and Whisper of the Worm a lot in this raid, RIP to the kings of getting nerfed. Players would eventually conquer this boss. Super ring right in this spot. So, whoa! Oh, yeah! yeah. Alright, there we go. Just a guarantee. Nice. Got some boots. Nice. After players crossed the ascendant plane and conquered the jumping puzzle, it was time for the giant piece of Chernobyl 5 gum, Morgeth. This boss's mechanics relied heavily on what I'm going to call the main mechanic of the raid, the Eye of Riven. Oh, I'm stuck. Yo, someone grab this pistol and press grenade on me. Right next to me. Right, 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 right. Uh, there's no pistol here. Oh, yes, there is. Wait, how did I even die? I can't even grab it. I can't grab it. Right, grab it. There's another, another bot. Use, uh, use, use a grenade right next to me. You. Use your right. grenade next to me, Riot. Yeah, behind you. Is this not you? No, that's a dead body. <laughs> 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 Ryan. With this in hand, players were able to shoot with it, do an explosion with it, and cast a super with it. This has many uses and at Shirochi this was supposed to be used if you couldn't get enough damage on the boss, so players could hit super on her, do another bit of damage after the super caused a stun animation, and then continue on. However, for Morgeth, players were supposed to use the grenade ability explosion to free their teammates. Most teams figured this mechanic out relatively fast, but the problem was balancing damage phases. One thing a lot of raid teams do too often, including myself, is go for too much damage on a boss, without going for a guarantee for next phase. It is this impatience that has made most teams competing not complete Morgeth for a solid hour and a half on average. This is due to the boss being weaker and players wanting that crispy one phase. But using the Eye of Riven super, you can stun the boss just to start the next round of the fight. Eventually, players got this done, and it was explosive. I got orbs. I got orbs. 
Oh, you are so fucking dead. Guardian I'm down. dead. Oh, uh, I, I got the rest. Do it. Do the, the super. Do the super thing. Kill him. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, baby. Fuck you, you giant exploded pimple. I want you. I want you to know I had all the faith in us. Oh boy. Some of you probably clicked on this video waiting for this moment, so let's begin. Okay, so Last Wish took the longest out of all the raids, right? Why? Well, let me introduce you to the most confusing puzzle that is now a joke once you have it figured out, Vault. Let me do my best to explain what is supposed to happen here. So the goal is to open up the vault door to meet our final boss, right? Well, Vault is interesting because once you know the puzzle, it actually does make a lot of sense the way that Bungie developed it. However, it is very hard to make sense of until then. So, during the raid, when you pick up the Eye of Riven, you are given a buff called Taken Essence Antumbra or Taken Essence Penumbra. This buff is our tip as to how we're supposed to solve the puzzle. So what the heck is Penumbra and Antumbra? Penumbra is defined as the shadow cast by the Earth or Moon over an area experiencing a partial eclipse. This is important because it is directional. Still with me? Okay, let's continue. Antumbra is the lighter part of a shadow that forms at a certain distance from the object casting the shadow. It is involved in annual solar eclipses and planet transits. Okay, so uh, if anybody in the comments is an astronomer or knows more about this, please, uh, please leave me a comment on that. Basically, Penumbra has to do with the shadow covering a space in the eclipse. The shadow is typically cast on the left side, while Antumbra is typically cast on the right side. The other indicator or hint in the room is when you're cleansing the plates with the buff. Yes, you kill an Eye of Riven and run through a hallway. When you cleanse a plate, assuming you cleanse the plate that needed the appropriate buff, the plate will actually show the rotation to that pen or ant working. I know, this is pretty complicated, and trust me, other teams felt your pain. By making it go up. When it goes up, it gets rid of it. So if you have a fish on the right, and someone has a fish in middle, when they have Antumbra, that means you put Antumbra in that one, and it'll make the fish go up top and get rid of it. But it needs well, to be the same symbol. Well, you get it? Wait, wait. Antumbra makes it go counterclockwise, right? Yes, Antumbra makes it make. So Antumbra will get rid of so, your right symbol. So Antumbra will get rid of your left so, symbol. So Sage, let's say you have one in mid, right? And, yes. And I have the same symbol in right, right? Yes. Does that you mean you want Antumbra? That means we want to go counterclockwise. No, that means yes. You want Antumbra because it makes it go up. Let me try one more thing. I'm gonna classify dragons as a bird. Let's see what. And go with All my right, sure. and see how it goes. How it goes. Like, see, people yeah, are saying like, on the water, on the ground, and in the sky. Let's get on. I mean, that makes on. That, that has <clears throat> logic to it. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Basically, players see three symbols when they stand on plates and start the encounter. If a player sees the middle symbol and I see that on my right, that means the buff and Tumbra must come cleanse my plate. The same for if somebody else's middle symbol is on my left. If a player picks up Penumbra, they must cleanse my plate. Players actually thought that the middle symbol on the plates was going to be used for hard mode originally. There's definitely more to this encounter than I think myself and pretty much the entire player base was ready for, but considering the difficulty of this encounter, most players who were racing actually stopped here. The other part to this encounter is how difficult it was to kill the knights in the room. So, during the fight there isn't a boss per se, but there are knights that will try to run to the plates. These knights were typically 20 to 25 power levels higher than the top teams in the race at the time. This meant that you needed to pop a super like Chaos Reach for Warlocks or Hammers for Titans to kill them. If these knights were to get to your plates and slam down for even a few seconds, they would kill your whole team and you would have to start all over again. You're slamming at the globe. Just a night globe. And night tree, night tree, and night glow. Slamming on the tree, I'm by myself. He's about to already go in. I'm gonna have to super this. I live. There we go. Okay, you lived. Okay, last one. Last one? Alright, night. Gotta be with you, Sweat. Make this guy. The one on tree needs baked. He's, slam he's slamming right now. He just slammed. Wait. You got that, Sweat? God, come on this guy, he said though. Nice, we got all night. Damn. Mm -hmm. okay. Do it two more rounds. Keep in mind, there are three rounds of three plates that need to be cleansed, so nine plates total. So how did the teams beat the vault? Well, Ninji and his team were incredibly lucky and just brute forced and guessed the plates in about an hour and a half. Make sure we get these fucking plates. I'm gonna go to bed. 
I don't. Nothing. We're good. Good shit, boys. I fucking love you all. Holy shit. Hold you. Oh, shit. That's so they were already at Riven, while most other top teams still competing were at this encounter for another 6 to 10 hours. Dado's team actually cut the audio to the streams so people couldn't hear their plan, and they started puzzle solving. People from Glad's chat and other chats went in there to start piecing together what Dado was doing without any audio. This was really, really funny. Redeem, on the other hand, was doing this. Eventually, after many, many, many hours, Dado's team figured out what you were supposed to do. So I don't care how it works. I'm just glad That's why I want to test. That's why I want to test. You get redeem a couple hours before Dado pulled the ninja strategy out and guessed the plates properly. Oh my God. The doors open. Let's go. Oh. So, Vault is finally beaten, and Sweatsicle can finally enjoy his legendary sandwich after seven hours there. So, Ninji has been at Ribbon for 6 hours longer than everyone else, but this boss is insane. Meet Ribbon of 1000 Voices. Dragon. Oh, oh no! There's a giant fucking dragon. What the fuck, dog? Dude, oh, uh, guys, fuck. there's a room up here. There's there's rooms on the side. It's time, boys. Play Riven. I can't move. Oh! Uh, I'm oh! underground. Oh, oh my oh, god. Oh, no. oh shit. What? The oh! I'm, what? Dude, look at this thing! Holy shit! What? Look at this fucking thing, dude. She's on. She's on a big awoken dildo thing. Shit. Oh dear god. Nope. That is Most teams at this point were just happy to be past Vault and Ninji's team was mad that they weren't already done with Riven. I actually am not sure if they ended up defeating Riven, but I don't think they did in the 24 hour raid race. That's how hard this boss was. When Math Class, Redeem, and Tier 1 finally made it to Riven, the first couple hours here was spent just learning the rooms and not instantly dying to the fire breath, the tentacles, or plain old fashioned enemies in the room. Most players now think of Riven as a joke, the boss where nobody knows how to do the mechanics, they just know you can easily one phase damage the boss through cheese and some exploits. Music? What? No, it's glitched. Why is this a glitch for everybody else? What, what, what's going on? Check you your settings. Try turning it off and back on. Huh. So, brings up a good point. Track again. Alright, and go. Uh, that health bar is freaking gone. However, those were not there, even though Glad was actually on to something day one. Oh. <laughs> Alright, I'm doing cluster bombs dead. One phase, dude, clusters. I own the field, bring a sword, dude. Bro, I'm telling you, these things are about to do all the tapes. Actually, that's a terrible idea. That's a terrible idea. This fight was ridiculous. I mean, seriously, nothing to me compared to how difficult yet tremendous this raid encounter was. Side note, what was your favorite raid encounter from the Destiny franchise and why? Like, please tell me. I'm, I'm really, really interested in that. Players would have to make maps of the boss's eyes as well as make maps of the room symbols for our friendly mechanic, the Eye of Riven. It's just it's that we don't care. From the record, but it's been okay, then we record it, dude. We recorded it and then we burned the recording. 
So, what makes this fight hard? Okay, so the team of six must split the group into three and three. Three people take the tree side and three people take the crystal side. One side is given one of two stun mechanics, the fanfiction favorite, tentacles, where players would have to bait the tentacle out and let the boss slam, then do enough damage to stun Ribbon so she would reveal her eyes, two of them to be exact, or the you're instantly dead mechanic, fire breath. With this one you had to bait her to fire the breath, then in a very limited window shoot her mouth to stun, then reveal two eyes. This is important to know the eyes because you have to tell the other side which eyes to shoot when they do damage. After you are done either stunning or damaging than shooting eyes, you would depict the eye of Riven up and let one player who picks it up tell the player behind the glass window at the back of the room which symbol they needed to cleanse. The player behind the window would call out where it was so the other player could use the grenade explosion to cleanse it. This was extremely difficult at the time because you had enemies constantly shooting at you and because both sides had to do it so the communications were wildly cluttered. At cleansing these symbols you create a lift in the back of the room to go up to the tower in which you fell down. You then do the opposite job of what you did last time, then go up another floor to meet your team, stun Riven three more times, do some damage, then shoot her eyes, then fall down, do some huge damage to her. This fight was so hard and is still a damn fun time legit. After three whole rounds through the entire cycle of the fight, Team Redeem was pulled through an Ascendant Realm where you have to parkour and kill ads fast. Trolley Felix is the one to blast you off. Then when you came back, they still had one more final surprise. Shield, watch the shield, yeah. Shield, guys, shield, guys, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, Flash, pick that up. Nice. Can you shoot anything? We're in, we're in. Res, 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 me, res, me, res, me. Final stand, final stand. Res me, res me. Final stand. Final stand. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Oh my! Wait, 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 wait. Let's go! go. Yeah. I love all of you! Some teams were not so lucky here. Okay. I, I have to have. Up to you guys. Damage. Shoot him in the face. We really got 20 seconds. We got this shit. Come on. Oh my god! Did we get it? We get it? Let's go! Is it? Is it? Is it? Inside, inside his mouth, inside his mouth. I'm shooting! I'm shooting! I'm shooting! Oh my god, I'm shooting! He did it. I'm shooting! Wait, I'm shooting! Wait, I'm shooting! Please no, please no. Wait, what? No, that's because of the ghost. Res. Wait, it's because of the ghost. It's because it's because of shared fate, the res timer. If that didn't think, fucking count, I swear to god. I don't think that counts because I think you had more time than that. We had him down to no out. Find Ribbon. Find Ribbon. I'm not gonna be able to jerk off for a week. What's even crazier and why I truly believe this fight to be the best in Destiny's history is because after you are done with that final stand, guess what? You aren't done. Order, Wait, chest that's order, chest, chest, order, chest, chest, chest. Look for the chest. Look for the chest. We're not done. Get that chest and go to fucking orbit. I'm fighting Leader. Where is it? Where's through, him, through him. Through him. Through in him. In him. In his body. In his body. Oh. I can't Let's believe it. We're not hey, done. I, I, can't I, I love it's all of you. Okay, I want to say, I say real quick. Shoot, wait, shoot, wait, shoot, it, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Oh, it's not done, it's not done. Shoot it, shoot it. Damage, 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 damage. Oh my god. Damage. Oh my god. We got it. The key, the key, the key, the key. The key, I got a ball, I got a ball, I got a ball. There's more, there's more. Okay, hey, stay, stay calm, stay calm. No, we're, stay we're calm. done, we're, stay we're, calm. we're done. Wait. This is just like a... I just want to say, I couldn't imagine how heartbreaking it would have been if they didn't get this heart killed and died here instead. Okay, so, raid over, right? Team Redeem has won this thing and now the heart is dead? Nope! Here comes our 580 power level and final encounter, Queen's Walk. One team has made it this far. With the power of the former Redeem man himself, Tifu, hosting Flesh Crunch, was it time for Team Redeem to take this raid? Fucking Tifu just hosted me for 20k. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like 
Looks like you ain't getting off, bud. <laughs> I can't f***ing leave now. Looks like, like you ain't uh, getting uh, off, bud. What happened? Not if this Centurion had anything to do with it. Seriously, this one Axie and Dart from this Centurion had the power to take out all six players at once. Aside from that, how insane was this raid? I mean, we just beat the raid boss and we still have more to go now. The goal of this fight was simple. Get the heart of Riven back from the inside of her mouth, back down to that room before the vault. How long could that take? Uh, you know, only two more hours? Yeah, this fight is not without its tough parts to it. So the goal may be to run Riven's heart through the whole area and back, but you are on a timer, and when it runs out, you get sucked into the heart itself. Fun fact, you can actually see the hands of the players holding you inside the heart in the sky when you're there. Just look up. So you're on a timer, and everyone must stay in your aura or they start to die. The players with the heart have to give a countdown for everyone and let them know when they are low on time. When they are low on time, everyone must get away or suffer the fate of being sucked into the heart with the other player. For the rest of the five players remaining, one player will get randomly chosen to pick up the heart. They must carry that until their time gets low, except this time the person inside the heart sees the orb from Morgeth and must pick the last one in the heart remaining to refresh the timer. After that, the next player gets sucked in and it's a rinse and repeat. So the other problem now. Yeah, you remember those knights from the vault, right? The ones that made most teams quit because they were too strong? Yeah, those are back and they're trying to kill the players inside the heart the whole time. This time though, they are even stronger. Some of these are also trying to kill the players advancing the heart too. This fight was a pure adrenaline rush for these guys though. Let's just set the stage again for this moment. You are the only team that has made it this far. You are on the cusp of the biggest raid race victory in Destiny history. All you have to do is run the heart the distance and you will go down in legend forever. Hundreds of thousands of people watching you near 19 hours into the raid. Then, the legendary handoff happened. And the rest was history. Nine, eight, eight, we don't have to seven, like six, fluid. five, four, three, two, flesh all you buddy. Here you go. All right, get ready gamers. Give us the timer. Seven, 16, mm -hmm. 15, 14, I got one, 13, I got two, I got I got one. 11, 10. Where's, where's the last one? Oh. oh. You just grabbed last yeah, one. Just... I am glad you did not heed her words. All right, we will nine. Eight, seven, six, five, oh, four. Woo! We did it. Oh! Grab the chest. Oh! We did it. Yes. The chest. Please. 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 No way. Please, Shoot Bungie. It. Please. Shoot it. Fuck Please, Shoot no it. troll. Please, Shoot. Bungie, don't troll. Please, Please Bungie, don't, don't troll. troll. Please, just give me my loot. Please, Bungie, oh don't God. troll. You assholes. I, mean, I hate you. We I fucking hate triumph. you and I love right? you at the I same time. I love you, Bungie. Bungie, Bungie I, please, no. for the love oh, of God, you've been torturing me for 20 years. I, I beg you. Wait, what did she say? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Where's my look loot? Around, look around, look around, look oh, around. Oh, chess. Look at all the chess. What the fuck? Wait, what is this? Escape the fire. Escape the fire. Escape the fire. Wait, what? Oh, oh, is this oh we got it. We got it. I got 1,000 boys. No! Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, 1,000 voices? Ah, I got grab one. Everyone grab one. Got everyone it, grab got one. It, got it, so everyone yes. grab one. Go to orbit. Requires ethereal key, so you yes, need yes, No, right. just go to orbit. Go to orbit. Go, 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 go. Trust me. Go to orbit. Trust me. We open the chest. We open the chest. Let's go. Let's go. Pog champ. Pog champ. Yes, Team Redeem, a whole 18 hours and 52 minutes after the raid came out, finally did it. They beat the raid. They got one of the greatest exotic weapons in Destiny history, 1,000 voices. They got an emblem that only Tier 1 would eventually get, and unfortunately, math class was two minutes too late to get. Keep going, keep going, keep going. I'm at three. I'm dunk it. One. I dunked it. Oh. Oh, wait, my. We, we have to do oh my god, that was literally last second. I'm stuck. Shoot. That was literally last second. Yikes, two minutes late. Literally two minutes. I don't know, uh, that doesn't count. God. I mean, there's two oh, minutes. It's just one, it's just one. And they got the first raid championship belt. 
But what else did this do? I should have known that Riven would grant one last wish. One last curse. Now the Dreaming City has been taken. I opened the gates. I ordered the attack. I should have known. This is something totally new and absolutely amazing in Destiny. What took place after Team Redeem beat the raid would affect the entire year of Destiny and still does even now. The final wish from Riven, the curse of the Dreaming City, and the cycle that would follow. Yes, Riven let out a final screech and the entire Dreaming City changed. It was now fully taken. This gave players a ton of new activities in the game to do. So what were those new activities? Aside from the cutscene and the Dreaming City looking different, this unlocked the Ascendant Primeval and Gambit on a new map and by defeating it it would give you a quest for a brand new exotic hand cannon, Malfeasance. This unlocked a slew of other things as well. We got the Strike the Corrupted, a new Crucible map Citadel, new Blind Well boss, new Ascendant challenge, new mission, 14 of 15 wishes scattered through the whole world which players went hunting for and could do some fun things on the wish wall, in the raid with to skip some encounters and use some good old fashioned fun. Move away, move away, move away, move away. Somebody screenshot this on our move away. Got it. I just screenshotted. That's 100% new. That's 100% yeah, new. That's 100% new. Let's go! Yeah, new wish! It. Let's go! Right there, screenshot right. that as well. Back up a little. Ooh, that was this blade's not good. <laughs> and I'm back up. People are saying it's wish 13. Alright, what that right there, screenshot that chat. Yeah, that's, that that's clear as day. No, I can see this very clearly. Some of these wishes were hidden in the raid, and some of them were in the Dreaming City, as well as the new Crucible, Strike, and Gambit map. And there was even one in the Forsaken trailer. This hunt for all the wishes had players enticed on finding all of them to this day. But, best of all, the Shattered Throne. Yes, Destiny's first ever three-man raid activity, an activity that had raid mechanics but only three people needed to be a part of it instead of a fire team of six. This was a complete secret that it existed, and players just stumbled upon it one morning while exploring the world's secrets that the Dreaming City had to offer. We've covered parts of the Shattered Throne and the 15 Wishes in a different video, but I want to stress again how much extra content was given to us by these players beating the raid. The 580 difficulty 3-man dungeon was not only extremely fun and challenging, but it also offered us a new exotic bow quest, and when completed, the bow allowed players to get rid of all those pesky eggs of the Dreaming City. In all, this raid race was something special. Something I don't know if it'll ever be top for me personally. With the stakes so high and the outcome as tremendous as the raid itself, one can really only hope. This raid inspired myself and countless others to get into raid racing on day one because of just how intense and challenging this was. And honestly, I don't know if I'd be here making content if it wasn't for this. This really got me back into Destiny. After year one of Destiny 2's kind of drought of content, it was weird. I played a lot of Destiny, and I wanted to make content for it at the time, but I wasn't as motivated as I was after this raid race. I mean, I got involved in the community, and ever since, it's been really a blast. But just remember everybody, shoot the heart, and Bungie, please don't troll. Mm. I want to again lend a huge thank you to Sweatsicle for helping me out with this video. If you haven't already subscribed to that legend, please do. I mean, he did unlock the Shattered Throne for all of us, right? I also want to thank all of you. The support has been tremendous on these past videos, and you give me the ability to shoot for an ambitious video like this one. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be greatly appreciated, as well as a subscription. I'm always streaming on Twitch, so a link to that will be at the top of the description as well. Anyway guys, stay amazing, and have a good one. Um, attention chat room. It is currently 420 fucking weed, bro. Is there like still fucking more after that?
Is yeah, there really no. fucking no, more after fucking running through the Ascendant Realm and bursting his down from 10% health? There's more shit after that? There is, but we didn't get that encounter. Listen, listen, listen. Literally, I'm gonna kill myself!